Hello, Dr. Cecil Kaninendijk Vandenbosch is head of the Department of Landscape Architecture, Planning and Management at the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences. He is also part-time professor of green space management at the University of Copenhagen. He has long been a proponent of urban forests and, and is addressing that topic in a keynote speech here at the 24th EUFRO World Forest Congress in Salt Lake City, Utah. Dr. Kanenendijk Vandenbosch joins us now to talk a bit about the Congress and his speech. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Now, I've sort of hit a little bit about your urban forest uh, addiction. Mm. Do you want to expand on that a little bit? How did, how did you get interested in that in the first place? It's a very good, uh, good question. Uh, like many other kids, I guess, who were to, in the forest quite often with their parents, I got interested in trees and ecology, etc. So that was my, my entry into the forestry field. Uh, but then I realized there was something missing in, in that uh, relation. So I got interested really in the people I mentioned as well, where to do that better than in the city. Oh, good. Okay, now I'm assuming that your keynote speech that you will be giving, we're doing this on a Friday and the keynote will be tomorrow, uh, will be about urban forestry. It will be, yes. What will the key points in that be? For me, a very important point is this issue of happiness and how we create happy cities for, for the world's population. Soon most of us will live in cities, or already do. So I think this creation of happiness is very much related to trees and nature in the city as well. G give me an example. How do trees create happiness? Just by viewing trees, we know that, for example, our stress levels drop in the city. Um, parks and other nature areas are wonderful areas for us to play, to meet people, to create social cohesion, etc. And this all contributes to our, our very happiness and well-being. Should we care about urban forests? Yes, we should. And, and not just because it's nice, but it's because it's necessary, it's needed. We need to have urban forests for sustainable cities, for cities where we ac actually can be healthy and well in uh, and happy in. And so it's, it's not really about uh, creating nice cities, but it's really about those economic benefits as well, and, and the psychological benefits, and not in the least also the environmental services provided by urban forests. Okay, what, you've been in this field, in this particular area for a while. Have you seen changes in the way that urban forests are viewed and managed and, and utilized by people? Yes, I think one thing is that there's much more awareness of the benefits and the need to, the need to economi economize, marketize the benefits, so put a value on them. I think also the way we look at urban forests and how we manage them has changed in the way that we integrate more. We look more from the single tree all the way to the prairie urban woodland as well. So there have been some shifts, I think, and urban forestry in general has become a more established field, I would say. And I suppose this just occurred to me that as, as the population gets more and more urbanized, that it tends to get divorced from the forest, the natural forest. So having an urban forest at least brings back some of that connection. I would say so, definitely. On the one hand, it relieves some of the pressure on, on the natural forest, and on the yes. other hand, it establishes this connection, for sure. Yeah. What's the biggest threat or challenge that faces urban forests right now? I think it is the whole urban development threat, and of course the fact that in, a, in an urban area there's a lot of political interest, a lot of economic interest, where urban forestry is often still seen as a kind of a soft sector. So uh, that we really have to fight how that. Do you, how do you face that down? How do you confront that? I think it's about, on the one hand, uh, putting the benefits clear to politicians and to the public, and also to create alliances, so to, to create support for urban forestry, broadly shared among the population and local community. You've been involved with the UFRO for quite a few years. Uh, Has that yeah. been a beneficial relationship? Very much so. I entered UFRO as, as a young student and then got into urban forestry, got into the, the, the networking in UFRO, and it has helped me tremendously to establish an international career as well, We're having worked now in five different countries, uh, working with urban forestry. Now, you've been here for the week, going through the various sessions. Has any one session stuck out in your mind? I would say the plenary we had on Thursday, together with the Society of American Foresters and the Canadian Forest Institute, where there was focus on, on the larger scale, uh, GIS mapping, etc., on the worldwide scale, as well as one square meter of forest and how to study that, and that connection between the two that may be counterintuitive counter but actually exists, that really inspired me uh, about the wonderful complexity of our field. And what about your own career? Is there one achievement for you that stands out there too? I think my colleagues and, I, and, I, and, and me, we have really been managing to establish urban forestry as a scientific field. But one specific thing I would like to mention is that we set up a journal 12 years ago, Urban Forestry and Urban Greening, has become well established, publishes very good papers, got an impact factor, and really has become a, a good medium for urban forest science. I see. And where do you go from here? After this Congress ends, you'll be back doing your work. What, where, was that, where will that take you? 
I think it's very much about, uh, on the one hand, governance issues. So how do we decide on urban forest and how do we bring in different stakeholders or shareholders, as somebody has said this week. But also I think about bridging between disciplines. I work a lot with landscape architects and landscape planners and, and they really have a very big role to play as well. To bring in foresters in a mix of disciplines dealing with our urban trees and urban woodlands. That seems to be a fairly common theme that, that forests forest studies have to get broader. They have to start looking at other things. You would agree with that, I think. I would very much agree with that. And the uh, sneak preview at the, the final statement from this conference will, will show that the word landscape will feature quite strongly in that. It and is. I could not be a bigger proponent of that, a fan of that. I think it's very good, yeah. And finally, I was going to say that your name, Vandenbosch, is very handy to have since it means from the forest. Now you have to figure out a way, I guess you have to talk to your mum to get this. Exactly. Figure out a way to get from the urban forest. That would be just perfect. Or perhaps uh, to the urban forest. To the urban forest, I think <laughs> that would better. be the best way to do it. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks very much, thank you. Okay. Yeah.